Hi, I'm Magnus Walker. Greetings from my downtown LA Arts District warehouse slash studio. Today's project is making a pleated face mask. Uh, I've got online, there's a few different options on what we call the pleat mask and then, you know, more of the cone-shaped dust mask. In the end, I decided to do a three pleat mask. I played around with a few different pattern sizes and came up with one that I think works with my face and the beard. So if you come around here, I'll show you exactly what it is I'm doing and how I'm getting to making um, a three pleat face mask. Obviously a lot of different ways you can do it. It's good that Jet's here to help. I decided to use some leftover four ounce cotton print bandana fabric and some lightweight tartan. So, uh, and also I'm bonding the plaid with some fusible material. So essentially I've pre-cut these pieces, the fusing, the woven tartan, and the print bandana fabric. I made myself a little pleat um, pattern piece, which as you can see is nine by seven. So essentially I'm gonna stack these three up together and just cut them basically as one piece. So it helps to have a sharp pair of scissors. Also helps to have a cat that's not in the way. So I'm just simply cutting around the line that I've drawn right there putting these three pieces as one. So those are my three pieces cut into one. I got the uh, bandana print and then I have the plaid and the fusing material on the back. So what I'm gonna do now is just use the iron <laughs> to fuse the back of the tartan. This will give it some rigidity and also act as a, um, you know, I guess a insulating um, membrane, which hopefully will keep whatever viruses may be out there from coming through the fabric. So simply that's now bonded to there. This is the outer piece. I couldn't find any elastic, so I'm gonna sacrifice one of these painters um, dust masks. This is essentially eighth of an inch elastic that I'm just going to cut into two seven inch pieces. And then we're going to go over there to the sewing machine and sew these pieces together. So essentially I'm going to start sewing the two sides together. My three pieces now became two. I'm just going to start right in the middle with a half inch seam. I'm going to back tack a little. When I get into the first corner, this is where I'm going to put in the elastic. I'm going to put it on a 45 degree angle. I'm going to take uh, some care to make sure that that elastic is tacked in. So I'm going to go over it a few times just to make sure the elastic is tacked. And then basically I'm going to sew straight down this piece right here. And when I get to the other corner, I'm going to put the elastic back in. So it's a single needle machine. It's an old Juki that I've had from the old series clothing days. So I'm coming back into that corner. I'm gonna retake the elastic one more time. I'm gonna come around. The goal is to do this in one take, obviously. When I get back to the final corner, same thing I did on the other side. The elastic is going in. Gonna get tacked down a couple of times. And the only thing I'm going to do differently here is I'm going to leave an opening so I can turn this, what is essentially a little bag, which is going to become the face mask, inside out. So I'm going to leave a little opening of approximately two inch. And I want to make sure that that elastic goes back into the same, uh, into the opposite corner the same way I did before, double tacked. Make sure, because we don't want that coming out. That's going to... Hold the mask in place behind our ears. I'm going to make sure I tack all stitches on the seams. I'm going to tap that and then we're going to go over to the iron, turn this thing inside out, put a few pleats in and then go back and sew it. So essentially I'm just turning it all inside out. This way all the seams are inside, it's clean, nothing's gonna fray. 
This is always a little bit tricky, but I'm going to test the elastic right there to make sure it doesn't come out. And I'm going to press the corners flat and do a little top stitch around it and do the pleats all at one go. I'm going to get in there with the uh, screwdriver just to push out those corners, make sure they're nice and square. So this is not rocket science, you know, anyone can sort of do this at home. Now what I'm going to do is iron it flat again. So I'm essentially just going to take the hot iron, go around the edge. Remember that little opening that I used? We're going to have to close that up. So what I'm going to do is actually turn that, fold it back and then steam that down. So now I've got it pressed pretty tight. If you want to come in and see that, I'm going to press it from both sides. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in the middle and essentially I'm going to put one quick little crease in there and that's going to establish where my pleat is going to go. So I'm going to do three pleats. This one's in the center. So I'm going to pull that back. Essentially pleat that up. I'm going to press it down. That'll be the first one. Then I'm going to do the second one in the same direction. Pull it all together. Fold it down. So I've got one, two, and then I'm going to do the third one over here. They're all going the same way. And then what I'm going to do is go over to the sewing machine and sew these three pleats down all together at the same time. So semi pre pleated, we're going to attach the pleats with a single needle top stitch and close up that hole at the same time. So essentially I think what I'm going to do is start with a tight stitch on the edge just to press it flat right here. This is where I wish the light on the sewing machine worked because I don't have a lot of great light here. But once I get in the corner I'm going to make sure I do a couple of little tacks to get that uh, elastic in place. If you want to zoom in here, H, you can see the first pleat is going in. So the fabric's pretty thick here, so I'm actually going to tack the pleats back as well. So that's the first one. Moving down on the second one, I'm going to tack that back, and then I'm going to do the third one. So I've got three pleats down one side. I'm going to tack them back, come back into that corner, run down this straight seam here, back into the other corner. Seem to be having a little problem with the power on this machine here. I think that's an old switch. And then I'm going to do the same three pleats going back up this way. And this is the side that's got the opening. So I'm going to make sure that gets closed up. I'm going to tack that first pleat roll right into the second one and the fabric here is a little bit thicker because it's doubled up so there's actually four layers of fabric i'm going to do that second pleat tack it down that's the center one i'm going to do the third and final pleat right there i'm going to tack that one down as well come into that corner make sure i'm good on the stitch there and then basically come right through to where i first joined up i'm going to pre-trim that So essentially that is it. That is the mask, pretty simple. It's double-sided, so you can pick whatever side you want. And let's just see how it looks. So that is essentially how the mask is. It's covering my nose. Obviously you can adjust, you can wear it either way. And uh, make, have fun making your own mask. Obviously you can adjust for whether you're wearing a beard or not. Well, that's sort of my guide to the DIY face mask. And uh, hope you guys are staying safe out there. And I'll see you guys later on. Cheers, I'm Magnus Walker.